Hello traders, welcome to uh, Pip Chasers Market Breakdown with myself, Nathan Stevenson. Uh, quick little introduction about myself, I've been trading for almost two years now. Um, managed to pretty much teach myself how to trade and now I have a market breakdown for you. Um, if you guys are interested and want to know more, you can follow our Instagram at Rebirth Holdings. And you can also check out our website, www.rebirthholdings.co.uk. Loads of different resources there for you, um, course material, and also online video and online help. So I want to do a quick little market breakdown, as you do on a Sunday, just to kind of get a clear picture of where you think trading opportunities will be in the coming week now before i do so before i do begin i want to kind of pre-warn you that my charts may look a bit different to what you usually see and that's because i one of my ethos is what you do with trading you bring it into your personality and you have your own personal style to your trading so once you learn how to trade you should be definitely looking to bring your own personality and just have your own way of reading the charts. That way it's going to make your trading um, a lot more fluent and a lot more natural to yourself. Um, so here we go, guys. going to break down. I'm going to try and get through all the pairs that I've been looking at over the last few weeks and just explain a few reasons of why I think, why, I, why I'm saying what I'm saying. So we're going to start off with the Aussie dollar. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really trade Aussie dollar often, but um, I do like to use, you know, fundamentals to kind of decide what pairs are we trading throughout the week. So if I do see that a certain pair is going to be uh, potentially volatile, then I will see to see if I can find myself an opportunity to capitalise on the movement. So this is the Aussie dollar um Monthly chart, and as you can see, on a monthly long-term basis, we are in an uptrend. And the reason why I say that, you can see the lows. We've got a, a, a low there. This is a high low compared to that one. And again here, we're making higher lows compared to these lows here. So um, long-term, we're in an in a uptrend. So, yeah. Bam, go down to the weekly now. And we can see on the weekly that... And uh, we have kind of found a bottom around 68.37. The last time we was down, we've got this big, huge um, green pin bar, kind of signifying that, you know, price action, any, any kind of price action around here, the buyers will push price back up. Okay, so uh, we look like we are kind of finding the kind of bottom prices. So eventually, what I would be expecting to see is the price to be pushing up over the next few months, I would say. Okay, so that's what it is. Um, guys, if you are unfamiliar about trading, the monthly and weekly chart kind of gives you a, a look at where you'd see price going over a matter of months and maybe even years. So it's good to just have a look at it to kind of get a clear picture of the, the larger picture at hand. And then what we do is go into the daily and then, then we can see more recent price action and then we can kind of see what opportunities will come up in the near future okay so going into the daily and just zooming into recent price action we can see that recently we have been making these low swing highs and also we've come down and made a, a lower swing low as well so we have been retracing from this big bullish leg up and since then we've been retracing okay um if i was to use the fibonacci tool and then we'll just fib this so interesting we see we've come to the 61 haven't quite made it to the um d1 but traders probably just took their profits out early whether we will come back down here is yet to be seen and uh, we would have to break this key level before I would expect any kind of price action there. But we are still within this fib zone and the latest swing up came was capped off by my descending trend line and the 38 fib. Okay, so looking at this, we're still looking at some potential downward momentum 
um, until we would kind of break this descending trend line or so further signs of bullish momentum. Um, we did see these kind of tweezer bottoms here, but that's kind of been invalidated by the wicks at my key level here at 127. So I'm going to just remove this fib and let you guys know what I'm expecting for the next week. So for our chart, let this load. Come on, man. Okay. So the four hour, what I can see that we had this ascending trend line and we did have a kind of a false breakout here. Um, as we went up for the retest, both times we've broken back through, but then we have actually um, broken through this trend line again. And this time we have retested. You can see the wick came up towards the trend line and um, had a nice rejection off that. MAs do look like they want to cross down anytime soon. Um, so if you guys are familiar with MAs, we do teach that in, in chapter two of our manual part four MAs. There is a great MA strategy here that looks to be presenting itself. So really, even though we are kind of wicking at this key level, I'm expecting it to break this key level and we've wicked it, didn't get a strong rejection trying to break it again. So I'm expecting a breakdown and then come down to um, one of the points of our trend line and the latest support. So that's what I'm expecting. Um, break of this trend line. If we do break, well, a great entry with a break, retest and continuation. So something like this. Boom, boom, break. Back up, retest. And then continuation down to the key level here at 7055 so i'll probably take profit around there okay so that's aussie dollar um to be fair guys i am actually in this trade already i went in at the retest here and um, i see it on friday and i'm expecting the continuation so that's aussie dollar guys uh, let's move on to usd cad so usd cad this is the monthly, you can see that long term we've made this double bottom. Um, so that was a big sign that the downward momentum had come to an end and now we're looking at uptrend. Um, I've got a key level at the neckline of this monthly double bottom and we kind of price actions kind of moving around um, by the neckline right now. So if you guys are familiar with double bottoms, this is the neckline. Price actions kind of playing around there. Okay, so this is the weekly chart, guys. So you can see that we had this first. We had this trend line that has been broken and retested. You can see this nice even star formation of the key level. And um, came down, found, and um, we've come down towards, if you remember the blue line, guys, was the, was the neckline. I'll quickly go back to you. So you can see neckline of the double bottom. And then we had... I wouldn't quite call this a morning star formation. So it has, it's not strong momentum going to the upside, but there is some momentum going to the upside. And we've also had this, you know, two bullish engulfing candles, which we'll have a closer look at when we go down to the daily. But you can see on a weekly, um, we're kind of in this, I wouldn't really call this a range, but we've kind of, um, we are still making these higher lows. All right, compared to this one, yes, we did have this trend that was broken, but we found support, still made a higher low, get a higher low. So, um, yeah, so things are looking looking potentially bullish for this pair. Yeah, we had a strong even star, but we came down again, making this higher low. Um, strong, great US data came out on last Friday for N NFP. Um, that was good for the dollar. Let's go on to the daily. Okay, so on the daily, we've got a few chime patterns here. So we've got, um, you could say, uh, inverse head and shoulders, um, double bottom here. And we have actually broke through this green key level and retested it twice. So um, for me, there is a lot of compromises for upwards momentum. I did have, oh, I have got this key level here at the start of, you can call this the neckline of the head and shoulders, or you can call that the start, 
the top of the double bottom. But nevertheless, we have broke above that. Um, Friday, we broke right above that. So looking at some opportunities now. We are currently holding above this key level. You can see wick, 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 wick. So that, is, that was a strong resistance that we managed to break through. And now we're kind of retesting that area. So um, I'm expecting some bullish momentum up to this key level, um, breaking, and really I expect it to come to 135.60 um, before we see any kind of turnaround. That's what I'm expecting. Obviously, guys, always wait for... Um, Always wait for confirmations. I was in this trade from here, 133.58, and I took some profit in NFP, and I've re-entered um, here at this key level. So I'm currently kind of around, just around break even. I'm probably like, let me have a look. Yeah, I'm messing around at break even right now. So we'll see how much of a stop loss I've got. My stop loss is at 3.340. So, yeah, I've got a decent stop loss, 3.340 here, below the last two swings. So let's see how that plays out. Okay, then. Um, next in, on the thing, we've got Euro JPY. You can see monthly we're kind of moving sideways. So kind of moving sideways into a pennant right now. Um, which way it will break, we shall see. We did have this strong rejection from our descending trend line here. And but as well, we have had this last month's candle was a bearish engulfing candle that broke straight through some support. So, hmm, maybe we're looking at some bearish momentum. I did have a bearish trade on Friday, but I closed out in a closed out in about 15 pips profit just because I thought we could push up before actually declining further. Um, looking on the weekly, yeah, looking at the weekly, you can see making these lower highs, lower high, lower high, lower low. So at the moment, we're kind of in a downtrend. Um, but you can see I have got this key level here um, that we're currently holding above. So price is being supported by a key level now on the weekly. Let's have a little closer look. So yes, yeah, similar, similar to USD CAD really, it's kind of just coming down to retest a key level after breaking it. But on this instant, I am not actually expecting bullish momentum. I'm expecting after these two um, kind of you know, doji in a pin bar. I'm expecting this to actually break and come down further. Okay. Um, I'm picking fib out. You can see all of these fib levels are not quite extending to the extension points again. 382 fibs holding. So, yeah, look at this. I'm expecting some downward momentum, possibly towards the D2 122.24. But that's going to be over the next few weeks, possibly. Um, there were quite a lot of euro data coming out, so keep that in mind, guys, when you're trading. But also remember to trade safe. So yeah, let's look at the actual opportunity. So the actual opportunity I'm seeing is more bulls. So last week I traded the bulls, um, and my TP was going to be one twenty five ninety. Um, if you guys are watching the Rebirth Holdings live on Sunday, I did have this trade that was entered here at 124.60. And that managed to grab, no, oh, hold on. Was that Sunday? Yep, Sunday, yeah. Um, so that grabbed I know, about 100 pips. But because we had a lot of this kind of storage here, it actually made me want to change my bias and go to the downside. So Friday, I entered the bears here and grabbed about 20 pips. No, grabbed about 10 pips. And then, to be fair, I'm wishing I hold, held on to it now because it would have gave me another 30 pips this evening. But 
that's how it goes. So good. Um, I'm not actually going to try and trade these bulls right now. I was going to be just patient, I think. But to be fair, guys, look at this. The risk reward is looking good. So to be fair, I think I will trade this. Um, yeah, so following my original bias from last week, I will trade this now. I'm going to put it on right now. And then after that, I will be looking for further bears. But if I see a good opportunity, guys, I will enter the market. Obviously, always using a good risk reward profile. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, guys. It has some tweezer bottoms here. We've come down and retested again. I do expect this level to be retested as an area of resistance and um, before actually really finding that momentum to, to push down further if it does want to. Okay, so. Got live trades, our guys. Um, but keep an eye on this. If you guys do trade Euro JPY, you can see if that was a win or loss there. And um, we will see, we will see, we shall see, we shall see. I'm gonna close off my Aussie dollar sell, lock in some profits. Okay, so moving on, CAD JPY. So it seems like everything's kind of pulling back now, I'm kind of making its mind up what he wants to do for the rest of the week. Um, CAD JPY again, kind of moving sideways. We've got um, this slanted that was acting as a support. We've kind of force broke and then couldn't really maintain above um, a key level at 84, 83, 85. We broke down again. So we've got this kind of outer trend line as well acting as support. Um, just looking at the monthly, I expect price to actually come back down and retest this support one more time before actually finding the momentum to break above and probably test these highs up here. Um, going into the weekly. We are having some movement, aren't we guys? We are having some movement, aren't we guys? A little bit of pullbacks here and there. Um, so let me continue with the breakdown anyway. So, yeah, on a weekly, um, you can see that we're kind of moving sideways in this kind of range here. Um, you could have this key level right there, say, try to break through, was unable to kind of hold on to these highs. Not one time could it retest and hold the support. And we broke, come up again retested it as resistance, has some strong momentum down. Um, really extending past this key level. You may see that there's a, this was when, um, I think it was, yeah, it was New Year's Eve. And it was to do with China and Apple. All the pairs just drip, dropped. So I was actually actively trading on that day. But if I was, I would have been very, very, confused to what was happening <laughs> but yeah moving going down to the daily now so you can see on a daily i've got a few key levels that are quite interested so i've got these two key levels here and both that was previously support now acting as resistance um i have another i have a, a support now but what's interesting is guys that price is broken below our long-term trend line and as came up and it's kind of retesting it as resistance at the moment there's not really much momentum into this right now but i'm sure over the next few days there will be a push in one direction i favor a push down and um, towards this trend line for a nice retest a nice rejection to push it up towards our in a trend line where it could either break or bounce. But at the moment, I've got all of these key levels here. We could in fact come up and try and push 83.92 first, 
before going to the downside. So if you are trading this, just make sure you got some nice stops um, above. If you, are, if you are selling this, make sure your stops are nice and above the last swing highs. All right then, so guys, hopefully you guys are um, following this and it's clear. Um, I'll actually go to the four hour real quickly. So looking on the four hour, you can see we've kind of got this head and shoulders formation, hanging man. Um, since then, we have seen a bit of momentum to the downside, but the moment I think it's just pulling back before actually deciding to drop. When in the morning, and um, when the London Stock Exchange opens, we might see that we might see the volume it needs to really decide where it's going. But currently, we're kind of moving sideways. We've got a lot of wicks, a lot of dojis. Um, but like I said, we got this break, nice retest of the key level, expecting it to come down to previous resistance um, and then either break down further to our, key, to our descending trend line or it could actually find support here before we to move. So keep an eye on price action on these key levels, okay? Um, the, there is potential for it to just continue to push up from here but that's not what I'm favoring at the moment I'm favoring more momentum to the downside GJ okay GJ is one of my favorite I probably I probably scooped up pip chase the most pips on GJ GJ has always been my favorite probably been my definitely one of my most successful pair when I was actually sticking with one pair GJ was definitely one of them as you can see now my pair selection is a lot more dynamic and a lot more based on where the best opportunities are. But for traders that are just, um, you know, learning technical analysis and for traders that are just getting into, you know, reading price action on price charts, I do recommend you stick to one or two because it can be a lot to remember. It can get confusing when you're looking at more than one price, more than one community pair. Um, sometimes you may... Not exactly get pairs mixed up, but sometimes you'll think that there's more correlation than there needs to be, or sometimes you'll forget that there are certain correlations. So that's something that's going to just come with experience. But again, let's go to GJ. So again, look, we've had this big, long, extended bearish leg, retraced up, and since then we have been trying to push and try and find new lows. But as you can see, we have got this slanted ascending with support that is managing to hold price up pretty nicely. Um, again, New Year's Eve, we had that silly push down. Um, a lot of the Brexit malarkey has kind of got price kind of moving sideways. You can see price has been more or less stuck between um, 1.56 and 1.36, but even more, even more so 1.40 and 1.52. So we have actually come up, retraced to around the 78.6, found support, and now it's kind of trying to see if it can push up and make a new um, lower high. Like I said, we are moving sideways, so after making a new higher low, we would expect it to make a new lower high. Um, I have got a few key levels here. I've got my weekly at 145. It says 50, guys. Actually, we need to change this because it's more close to 20. Okay, so, um, yeah. Go to the daily. Oh, and a daily, we have been in an uptrend. Um, there's been a, uh, some nice, real bullish weeks. Over the last few, few weeks, though, it has been kind of moving sideways. But we've got, I kind of got this, I call this, a, I want to just call this the Big Mac. Got the the free ones, so we close. This is, I think I've made this now, guys. The Big Mac, the newest charting pattern. Okay, the Big Mac, Rebirth Holdings, Nathan Stevenson. Big Mac has been introduced to the world. <laughs> so we got the Big Mac here, and we price is currently just wavering between it. Um. We have got, remember, if you remember from the weekly, we had this descending trend line that we've managed to break above and we're currently trying to find some sort of support from it. We have on a few occasions, but then the sellers have 
push the price down off these key levels. So currently, currently I'm not in this trade. Um, I did trade some G pairs on Friday, but um, GJ wasn't one of them on this case. So as you can see, recently we have seen, we're in this kind of channel at the moment, and we broke through the middle bun, retested, and this on Friday morning was a great opportunity for a short. Um, I was good. I was lucky enough to catch it on G U, but not G J. But we did push down, come down, and it came back down towards our weekly key level at one four five twenty, which is very interesting. Hold on, I'm a, I was in G J. Sorry, yes, this is what I was in. Take it back. I was in G U. I was in G J, and I caught this move here. To be fair. I was in it from had a key level just here. Um, the news came out for I can't remember what news came out, and I think we did we had a manipulation spike up to this key level. But upon looking at where this key level is, that would have been the perfect place to strike. But I did have a nice healthy stop loss that managed to keep me in this trade, and I managed to scoop up a nice how much pips was it? A nice hundred pips. So it was a great way to end the week last week. Um, so yeah, there we go. Blah, blah, blah. Now what are we expecting to see? Well, we had a strong rejection of this key level and we've had this kind of bullish Maribu Bowsley candle. I am expecting to, well, it depends. Like we could stay within this channel and push up towards the top level. We could just be, like I said, we are ranging. And we have kind of made this extended double bottom. Again, if you guys have seen our charting patterns, um, you'd know. So what you actually could do with this, especially where it is now, um, look at this great risk reward on there, 300 pips, and you could be just risking 54 pips for that. You know what I'm saying? If you was trading this double bottom, um, this double bottom here. So opportunity there, but you can see that it does have to break quite a few key levels for it to be able to do that. But to be fair, I like the look of that. I would stick my neck on the line and say, this is a great setup, do you know what I'm saying? So you know, when you're trading, sometimes you have to just trade what you see in the market. Uh, you're not gonna always win. Like I'm looking at this now, it's kind of retracing. You're not always going to win, but if you do use good risk reward and you do just trade what you see, you should come out on top in the end. Do you know what I'm saying? You should be able to make some good profit and some good pips. Okay, so yep, there we go. That is GJ for you. Um. Let me know if anyone takes this trade. But I love the look of that. I do. I just love the look of that trade, to be fair. I just love the look of that trade, to be fair. That looks great. <laughs> Does everyone know what that means? So 6 a.m., guys, should actually give you guys some confirmation of trades. So don't rush into placing trades. Um, don't rush to play, yeah, don't rush into placing trades. Um, it's not going to end good, but at the same time, I do recommend that you just try and trade what you see and don't be too bung down in this and that. As long as you've back tested your trading methods and you're showing that yourself that you can be a consistently profitable trader, then why not go for opportunities that you think are good? As long as you're, like I said, following good risk reward, then that's what trading is about. Do you know what I'm saying? Risking for that reward. All right then. So I don't know how long this video has been, but let's carry on. GU. So GU, bam. You can see quick and easy here. We have got this monthly double bottom. Um, I'll just zoom in. It looks like we found a bottom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we'll listen to future. 
All right then, bam, bam, bam. So look, we've got this, this descending trend line. We broke up, retested. You can see, look at this doji hammer. And now we're heading towards our outer trend line and also this key level here. And uh, we've retraced and we're looking to go back up. Um, weekly, again, look, we've got a double bottom, bam, bam, bam. A lot of bullish momentum, retracement up. Come back down, retraced. Everything's pretty straightforward there. If you know about tra um, trying patterns, so going down to the daily. So what could happen is we've got these two our daily key levels here. So if we do break out to the downside, I expect us to either find support at one twenty eight ninety seven. Um, if we don't, then it's peak. We will come all the way down to this descending trend line here. Um, I don't know if you could call this a retest, but I am calling it a retest. We've got this morning star formation off here, and we have come up and made higher highs. So for me, that's good enough confirmation that we are out of this downtrend. So that's why I'm pretty much banking on bullish momentum through the pound um, this week, at least until Friday. If the deadline comes out and it's whacked, then it could be peak. But you can see we've come down and made a spinning top here. So a little bit of an indecisiveness here of where price action wants to go. And um, we've got a bit of a pennant formation. We did break up to the downside, but we did break up to the upside, but found resistance at our key level right here. So um, what's gonna happen next? Um, just like GJ, I am expecting bullish momentum from this, just looking at this daily spinning top at a uh, good support that has been supporting price for the last uh, few weeks um, and back up to the highs so we've either got you can either have a target at the top of my key level here at 131 or you could extend into this area of wicks um, a break above this area we'll see us go up to 135 okay so that's what i'm seeing for gu trade safe on that one and then lastly Hold on, let's just go to the four hours so you can see this in a bit more detail. So you can see I've got price action up in this pennant. We currently are trying to break through this descending trend line. So a breakthrough, a breakthrough it, and then some price action at this ascending support will be a great confirmation for me. Um, we ha also have this double bottom here. So Here's my first, this will be my first target. And then my second target would, as I said, 135 up there. All right. So, guys, that's what I'm expecting for GU. And please, obviously, do your own analysis first. This is just what I'm seeing. This is just my analysis. And then lastly, let's go into Eurochef. So, Eurochef, I, this is the one that I um, had in the group last week. I had this in the group last week with um, EJ. Not in the group, sorry. I did this on the live on Rebirth Holdings, at Rebirth Holdings on Instagram. Um, we are currently broke out of this downtrend and we was probably looking to retest this, but we have found support at past resistance. Okay, so you can see this area here. Um, it's kind of holding price back up. We had a Marabuzo candle. Um, last month, but this month we kind of managing to find support. Whether that is going to continue to go up, it probably. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Let's get to let's get into it and see what we can see here. So, you can see on a weekly, I have some key levels here. So I got a monthly, weekly, monthly, and two key levels that I just found and thought they were um, reasonable to add into this technical trap. Oh, I'm getting tired now. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so bam, what we can see here, yeah, we're kind of stuck. We're ranging at the moment. Like I said, there is some past resistance that's acting as support now. Um, you can see this nice, last week was a nice weekly um, piercing candle. So let's go into the daily. And on the daily, you can kind of see this a lot more clearer. You can see that we had this 
break of this descending trend line and a look at that a nice lovely retest retest with this bullish engulfing candle and we've since then we've sub, sub, subsequently broke above the blue ma as well so where do i see this pair going um i do see the pair coming down potentially coming down first before finding more momentum up to one one point one five okay so that's what i'm expecting guys um I'm not currently in this trade. I'm going to just sit back and wait for the opportunity to present itself. But yeah, some price action down here would be great. Um, or I could just use my fib and see what I can find. To be fair, what's fib saying to me right now? If I also just do this little swing here, fib is currently saying to me that fib's currently saying go long. Risk rewards great on this. Um, I did have a buy limit. So guys, if you guys know about Fib, the seventy eight point six level is a really, really um, vital level and. We do expect that to be the last support. If price is going to find support, it is going to be at the 78.6 as the last as a last resort. So if it's going to break below that, then the uptrend more than likely is going to be over. So it just provides you with a great risk reward profile and a great opportunity for to get maximum pips on your trading opportunities. So that's it for today, guys. Um, interested to hear you guys' thoughts, what you think about what you've seen today, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something from it. Um, and then that's it, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, leave some comments or feedbacks. Follow us on the Instagram if you want to see or hear more. We have got a lot more things coming out for you new traders or you traders that just would like that extra support or just want to join a community of traders that, you know, just regular guys. Myself, I'm only 28 years old, been trading for two years. Personal trainer, bodybuilding is my thing. Um, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just a regular, regular mandem man, actually, with the mandem, FIFA, them things there. I used to do a lot. To be fair, guys, I'll be honest, trading is kind of taking over. But... Once I've got myself sorted, I'll be back, back to doing my usual things. You get me loving life. So, bless. Thanks for watching. My name is Nathan Stevenson. This is Rebirth Holdings. This was Pip Chaser's weekly breakdown. This is the first one we're doing. You will see more from me and you will see more from Travis Duncan as well. And maybe, hopefully, eventually, we'll have more traders a part of the Rebirth Holdings. Um, Rebirth Holdings community rebirth holdings conglomerate peace out and happy trading stay pipping play safe like i said pip chasers check us out we've got the website rebirthholdings.co.uk instagram at rebirth holdings bless <laughs>